It's the middle of April. It's probably about time we got the main crop potatoes on the go. And this year, I have decided I'm doing all my potatoes in buckets. Now, traditionally, I'll have only done probably the first early, second early's in the buckets. Any sort of main crop have gone in the ground. I've got a bed over there behind the camera that you can't see at the moment. Had a big long bed that I grew far too many potatoes in. And since then, I've sort of rationalized it and changed the space and using it for different things. But this year I've decided I'm only doing potatoes in buckets because it's so much easier. But we're going to do it two different ways. Using the buckets, we're going to try two different things. We've got a bit of an experiment going on. And let me, let me show you what I've got here, first of all. And I'll bring these up to the camera a little bit closer and you can see them. So these are two different types of potatoes there. These have been chitting for quite a while. You can see them there. These ones on this side along here, they're highly red. And these ones along here are King Edwards. The King Edwards are the ones I'm gonna do this bit of experiment with. And let me select one of these seed potatoes in particular. So when you chit them and you can see them there, we've got lots of little chits coming off. There's some that aren't quite as big over there, but you can see the two big ones on the top there chuck them in the bucket, those chits off, they're gonna go, gonna go, gonna grow, gonna get potatoes, and we're gonna get quite a lot of potatoes. Now, the problem with that is, in the buckets, obviously, these buckets here, they're 30 liters, it can be quite tight on space. Now, last year, when I've done these in the buckets, the main croppers, I think it's only once, and that's when I, I faffed on, we got some massive ones, so kind of learning from that. And I've seen Tony O'Neill do this as well at Simplified Gardening, and that is, we're gonna, we're gonna put in one of the buckets, we're gonna leave them like this, with all the chits in, and we'll put them in. I'll take you through planting them in a, in a bit there. But this one here is a, is a really good example. Come here. Now you see how there's two chits on the top there, which are quite nicely spaced. Then there's a smaller one here, and a smaller one there, and there's another one round there. I'm gonna cut the seed potato in half. So we're gonna come right down the middle there, and on one side of the seed potato, we'll have one, two, probably two chits, and on the other side of the seed potato, we'll have three. In theory, I should be able to space that out in the bucket, so each sort of section of the seed potato, we're gonna plant it as if it was a single seed potato. So we're gonna give it lots of room, lots of space, hopefully to grow and create nice, big, chunky jack of potatoes. Anyway, enough of me waffling on. I'm just gonna get set up a little bit more around here, We'll come back and we'll see about getting these chopped up and planted in the buckets. So, first things first, let's start getting some compost into the bucket. Now, in this, in this compost, like I say, I've used it before. There's little bits of potato skin in it from old seed potatoes. There's bits of root and stuff like that from what's been grown in there. But that's fine. Potatoes are pretty pretty robust you know they don't, they don't mind a bit of, a bit of roughage like that in the in the soil anything i will do i generally look for any little weeds that might have started growing at this time of year but i'm gonna fill that 10 to 12 ish sort of handfuls let me show you a little bit close that's about how much compost i put in that bucket just to start us off and i'm gonna mix two different things in there this one here is Vitax potato and vegetable fertilizer, and it stinks to high heaven. It's like the most concentrated manure you've ever smelt. And I'm just gonna give that a bit of a sprinkle. That's maybe it's about, I don't know, a half a handful in there. And again, the same with the fish blood and bone. Once it's in there, we're gonna give it a good old mix off. And all that's doing is any nutrition that's come out of that compost from the previous years, we're just putting that back in. Next, let's get our seed potato and our knife and see what we're gonna do here. So I'm very, let me just bring it up here. I'm very delicately, so there's a chit here in this here. So I'm gonna have to come sort of diagonally. What I don't wanna do is damage them or cut through them. Now, in an ideal world, what you would do is once you've cut them open, is you leave them to cure, you just leave them sitting out somewhere, let them dry out a little bit. The risk, because I can control them, the risk of these actually rotten or getting something in them is pretty, pretty small. Let's get this in. So what I'm gonna do, take this one, and I like to use the handles and the buckets to, to help me remember where I've put the seed potatoes. So we're just gonna pop that one, first of all, in the bucket and let me just lay that down in there and I'm gonna take what? Let me just gently put some compost 
on top of that seed potato there so that keeps that in, in, in place so it's not going to topple over or move about to know exactly where it is. So I've put two double handfuls of compost in there, another sprinkle of the potato specific fertiliser, another sort of half a handful of the fish blood and bone. I'm just going to mix that in half a seed potato and I'm going to put this at the opposite handle and because we've now got that layer of nutrition in there as well hopefully the second seed potato is going to feed off that and the bottom seed potato is going to feed off that bottom but let me just show you if I can be gentle there so it doesn't doesn't tip over hopefully you can see there how it's looking and then once I've done that it is literally just a case of scooping up again that first one being gentle going in to keep the uh, keep the seed potato in place because we don't want it going a bit crazy but all over the place they should have pretty much the most amount of room in one of these buckets that they can have and I'm going to top it up to pretty much there so you can see it there near enough to the top and it's as easy as that and one thing I must do that I am terrible for but I have written out some little seed potatoes. And look, we've got again King Edwards, and these are planted on the 21st of the 4th, and I've got half experiment on there. So I know that they're the, the half seed potatoes, and that's our experimental tub, and I've got my other, other one here for the second batch of seed potatoes, which we'll get on with in just a jiffy. I've already made a bit of a head start, so we've got our first layer in there, doing exactly the same as the other bucket, even though we're gonna plant this one up slightly differently the way we're going to do it in terms of the layers and things like that is exactly the same and let me pick another one of our king edwards again looking looking good nice big chunky seed potatoes but we're just going to pop that one in on the one layer and like i said this this one is going to be slightly different in the way we do it but again we're going in nice and gentle on top of that first sort of seed potato there in the bucket just so it's not getting knocked and nudged and again I've put it opposite the handle and it's probably even more important when we're doing it this way because we're gonna just push the boundaries of space in terms of the what we can fit in the bucket and we've but what I'm gonna do with this one because we're putting more seed potatoes in here imagine if you imagine right We've put this here, say this is this is what, 12 o'clock on the bucket. I'm probably gonna come round to about four or five o'clock with the second potato. And once it's there, we're just gonna again, a little bit on top, keeping it in place, being even though the nice, nice big sort of chunky seed potatoes, we're still gonna be a little bit delicate to begin with so there we go we've got two layers in there now so for the third layer again a sprinkle of that half a handful of this when i'm doing that in the bucket i'm literally just running my fingers over the top of the compost and it's just mixing into the compost so if we've done that one at 12 o'clock that one at <laughs> let me get the right seed potato there we go that one at 12 o'clock that one at around about four or five o'clock i'm probably going to put this one in at around about eight o'clock. So again, that's trying to maximize the space inside the bucket. You know, we've got them as far apart as we possibly can from each other, because obviously they're gonna be constrained as to how far they can grow out, whereas under the ground, they can pretty much go where they want and do where they want. Quite contained, quite constrained, hopefully maximize the space. So all I need to do with this, top that up to the top, like I did with the other one, and that's it done. So I'll get that done and I'll come back to you in just a jiffy. So let's go and have a little look at how things are looking. So we've got the two buckets over here that have been planted up here, they are. They look pretty much identical. Here's all the other bits and pieces that I've been using while I've been doing this, but we've got our one here. This has got a half potato in it. We've got our ones here. This has got three full seed potatoes in there. You can see they're almost identical. As always with these things, I'll pop a link down below in the description. You can go and have a look. You can see the seed potatoes I've used, the nutrition, the buckets, all that sort of stuff. I don't keep any of that stuff secret. Nothing gets hidden away around here. You can see everything. 
that I've been up to. So there's only one thing left to do, I guess, and that is to, to see how they turn out. And you know, it's gonna be a good few months, so why not think about subscribing? If you subscribe, you will get a little notification that comes back and tells you when these are ready, and we can have a good look inside the bucket. It's probably september -y sort of time, I reckon, to see whether the one single sweet potato that we chopped in half, whether that does grow as nice, big, jack of potato sized potatoes, and whether the one in the bucket where we've got three single seed potatoes in there all sort of laid up on those different layers, whether they give us lots of potatoes, but albeit probably a little bit smaller given the size of the buckets. Anyway, these are going to go off into the polytunnel. Like I say, up here in Scotland, it's just a still a little bit of a risk of it being too cold. Wherever you are in the world, you're probably okay-ish, unless it's really cold. Obviously, if it's freezing, don't do it. You could probably leave them outside now. They'll not come to any harm. The real risk with the potatoes there is when the shores come up. So when those green tops come up and the frost gets to them, that's when you get a problem. When the sea potatoes are tucked away, nice and warm inside the compost there, if there's a light frost, the likelihood is they'll be okay. I'm just fortunate that I've got the polytunnel here. So I'm gonna move them inside into the polytunnel they'll be in there a couple of weeks, you know, maybe it's three to four weeks before they come out, because the tomatoes, the cucumbers, the chilies and stuff will be going in there anyway, and they'll come outside and they'll be absolutely smashing. Anyway, that's me done. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now, folks.